what I am showing you now is the PET bottle type, that's polyethylene type bottle, that uh, Suhas Ralkar provided the sample of his fuel in when we were there in India. And uh, the fuel was put in here as a semi-wet slurry containing nickel, titanium, carbon, potassium carbonate, uh, and lithium hydroxide with some water in there having been processed for anywhere up to a couple of hundred hours um, in total. And essentially it's just screwed up like this, and that is it. Now, he went to show us, you know, that the fuel for some reason makes the uh, pet bottle brittle, and he picked it up, and with almost just th the pressure it takes to lift it up, <laughs> the thing exploded in his hands, and uh, you can see the debris on the table in another video. Anyway, so... Um, he gave us a sample of the fuel, and I'm going to put some gloves on and uh, just show you. This is Final Fuel second batch, the same type that uh, I believe showed some sort of magnetic properties when I was looking at it with the mobile phone. Um, it was also on the uh, large format. This is a 10 by 8 inch um, negative here. And uh, we exposed for two weeks uh, the negative to uh, some batches of fuel that he sent previously. Uh, and uh, we appear to have seen some strange radiation. Some people call it tachyons or whatever. Um, now, the interesting thing about tachyons uh, is that, uh, well, before I get on to that, I just want to say that this bottle was fully intact. And then within less than 24 hours, uh, uh, it basically started to fracture here. And it's got worse. Uh, and we're only less than a day and a half after receiving this sample. So it's degrading the um, the uh, PET. Now, uh, <laughs> when I took this out of my suitcase, I, I did get some on my hands, and there was no feeling of caustics. Uh, of course, I washed it off thoroughly, um, and I, I handle it now with gloves. Um, but anyway, um, this is degraded further. So what I intend to do uh, is to see what happens when we expose this plate. I'm going to sit it in here for a long period of time and see if we get any more um, strange radiation uh, uh, tracks on this negative uh, until we can get a chance to have a look at this fuel or use it in a reactor. Now, the interesting thing is that strange radiation has been observed by uh, Russians and Ukrainians and other um, uh, Lena researchers over the years, and I think uh, the group in Kiev um, with Vladimir Vysotsky and another uh, individual I forget right now, um, they used CR39, which is a type of polymer um, which is used typically in um, glasses, for instance. It's got very high scratch resistant, uh, very similar uh, optical properties to glass, uh, but it's like half the weight, so it's good for lenses. Uh, but also it's used uh, to detect radiation, uh, because as uh, high energy particles go through it, um, it breaks down the chemical bonds, and so um, it, when you then etch th that glass, uh, it, it removes those uh, parts of the CR39 that have been exposed uh, to whatever the radiation was. And by doing this, they could see the three-dimensional structure of the tracks made by the uh, strange radiation. So um, I've looked at the uh, resistance uh, to lithium hydroxide and, and, and potassium hydroxide and potassium carbonate and carbonic acid uh, for polyethylene uh, plastic, and it seems to be pretty resistant. So the question is, what, what is happening? Well, we know if there's strange radiation coming out of this, that this will be able to break down the chemical bonds. And certainly you can see in the previous video, <laughs> the, uh, the PET bottle had basically been disintegrated. Um, uh, now, whether that's eaten away or strange radiation decay, I don't know. But um, what we can say is in this case, there is direct contact between the uh, slightly moist uh, slurry of the fuel and the PET bottle itself. So what I want to do is to arrange this here on this uh, uh, tape uh, and uh, with, um, uh, so it can expose the negative. And then I have the secondary 
uh, PET bottle uh, base, uh, which gives me some different distances from the source. And I'm going to tape this into place like so, so there's, there's no chemical contact uh, between the fuel and the PET in this outer casing. And we'll see what happens after maybe a week, if there's any uh, strength weakness in this PET bottle, um, or if maybe we can do some chemical etching like you would do um, with uh, CR39. Uh, we can see if the strange radiation is weakening um, this uh, particular uh, non-contact PET. So that is essentially the experiment, um, and I will show you in a split second when I've got everything taped up. Here is the final layout, and uh, for just because they're there, and we can use them. I've got a thermal neutron detector here and a fast neutron detector here, arranged around uh, the uh, fuel. Um, and what I did with the non-contact PET bottle is I put it off so it's concentric, so that the um, places on this side are tighter to the fuel. Um, and slightly further away from the fuel on this side. So that gives us a range of sort of different detection lengths um, from the source of uh, potential strange radiation. So I'm going to leave that for uh, a week or two and uh, then see if we have anything maybe on uh, the emulsion. Uh, this uh, we will have a look at uh, on a kind of, kind of daily basis. Um, and then after the two-week period, maybe, uh, we can see if there's any degradation in the structural integrity of this PET uh, cover. I do expect the actual um, fuel kind of uh, container to continue to degrade, depend, uh, you know, considering its uh, uh, rate of decay so far. Uh, anyway, we need to keep an eye on that so that it doesn't go everywhere. Um, so, uh, I will get back to you if there are anything interesting to note. Thank you for watching.